Good morning and welcome to module four. Okay. Our agenda for today will be doing a textbook, Madias Point, doing the lecture summary, concept test, and we do hope that we can finish this in the first hour because I prepared another uh, article um, and I'll show you um, ways to answer my questions. Okay, and I do hope for today we get to talk. I get to talk to everyone. So hopefully maybe spend half, one, one and a half hour or close to two hours. Okay, so we'll proceed. So for today, we're going to talk about the service value chain. And we'll be touching upon chapter 6, 7, and 10. You know, just a reminder, um, if you haven't submitted your team project proposal, uh, please submit it so I can review. Okay, so we can start with chapter six. Zoom in. Let's see. Okay, so let me just zoom out a bit. Okay, the service value system. Okay, SVS uh, is a framework, uh, it's basically a system from the ITIL, right, framework. It is a model representing how all components and activities of an organization work together to facilitate value creation. So we have been seeing different ac components and activities, right, with the diagram, the one with the purple, where there's a demand and there are components and activities, right? And there's a value at the end, okay? So these includes guiding prim principles, governance, service value chain, practices, continual improvement, it input and outcomes, okay? Okay, so that's fine. You can sp skip that. So this is the diagram that I've been mentioning, right? And as you can see, the service value chain is the in the middle, in the core, right? And factors that affect that are governance and practices, right? And other factors that would affect that, right, is the guiding principles and continual improvement, okay? We'll define each um, component or element in the SVS, okay? One is opportunity or demand. So these represents options or possibilities to add value for stakeholders or otherwise improve organization, right? Demand is the need or desire for products and services that can originate from internal and external consumers. So again, there is a demand for a product or service required by uh, internally in the company or your customers, which is external, okay? So demand is the very first input for the SVS, okay? And value is the outcome, right? And value can enable, right? The uh, SVS can enable the creation of different types of value for different stakeholders, okay? Guiding principles, right, are recommendations, okay? That's why when you see in the, in the diagram, it is in the outer most part, right? It is a recommendation. It does not need to be strictly followed, okay? And that can guide an organization in all circumstances regardless of change in goals, strategies, types of work, or management structure, okay? Governance, right, is the means by which an organization is directed and controlled, right? Activities include evaluate, direct, and monitor. So this is more strict, and this has to be followed, right? So service value chain, right? Now, 
this is defining this one, the core, right? So service value chain is a set of interconnected at activities, right? That an organization performs to deliver a valuable product, meaning the uh, positive impacts outweigh the negative impacts or service to its consumers to facilitate value realization, right? So again, when we start planning, there is a perceived value, meaning there could be a value, but it does, but it did not happen yet, right? When we say value realization, we make it, uh, we now have the value, the value has now an impact to the organization. We can now feel it, right? That's what they mean by value realization, okay? Practices are a set of organizational resources designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective. It could be a best practice, right? It could be an industry best practice or a company best practice. And again, this is more uh, to help the service value chain, right? And lastly, we have the continual improvement, right? So we always want to ensure that uh, the organization's performance is al always aligned to change changing stakeholder expectation, right? So it means that doesn't mean that oh it provides value and we stop at there, right? Stakeholders could say we want more, we want more quality, right? And then we have to improve the service or the product. So the SVS is designed to combat silos within an organization. When we say silos, it means that in the organization, there are many different teams or departments that operate in silo. When I say in silo, they don't talk to one another, right? They just function by themselves and don't communicate with other departments, okay? That's what we mean by silos, like being alone or not communicating with others, okay? So again, what happens now is that department focuses only on their work, right? Where they ignore the bigger picture, which is the, let's say the organization's goal, right? They would tend to ignore that, right? So we again look at the, would encounter the word holistically, which is big picture, right? Silos, or again, teams doing their own thing, right? Make it more difficult for an organization to become agile, right? To have a faster improvement process or development process, and also difficult for them to be resilient. Meaning, if something happens, they it is harder for them to recover, okay? Because they limit effective communication. Again, they don't talk to other teams and reduce the power of a shared vision, right? They don't have the, um, the shared vision, meaning they don't see the goals of other teams and uh, the organization as the whole. So a siloed organization will experience these symptoms, right? Uh, they have the following, right? Uh, when they say symptoms, um, these are uh, the behaviors, right? In this case, right? Or the things that we can see, right? One is an ability to act quickly or take advantage of opportunities. Next is reduced ability to optimize resource, meaning to um, maximize the use of resource, right, across the organization. Poor decision making, poor visibility or lack of transparency, meaning um, other departments doesn't know what the siloed um, department is doing. So meaning if a team would look at another team they don't know what's happening within the other team, right? 
hidden agendas and an increase in unhealthy organizational politics. There's Department A, Department B. Department A has a different agenda and Department B has a different agenda, meaning they do have different goals. Maybe they serve different customers, right? Um, and they only think about their own department's performance, right? A lack of clarity about value streams, interfaces, and handoff points, okay? So again, the value system helps to discourage silos. So meaning they promote more collaboration and communication, okay? And we're going to be talking about these in the next chapter, which is here. So SVS, Opportunity Demand Value, okay? Opportunity and demand trigger activities within the ITIL service value system, okay? These activities lead to the creation of value. Opportunity and demand activities becomes value, okay? So opportunity and demand are always entering into the system, right? But the organization does not automatically accept all opportunities or satisfy all demand, right? So again, even though let's say there's many, many demands, uh, stakeholders would still check if which one is a top priority, right? Which one gives us most value, right? Then we'll do that first, right? So maybe you'll encounter an organization with a lot of opportunities, right? But they still lack the um they could the one of the reasons could be they lack the manpower right or maybe they don't have the resources right or it could be as well the market isn't ready okay opportunities are ways a service provider organization might be able to add value okay might be able to add value for stakeholders, or they can also improve their own organization, right? Improving uh, one's own organization, right, is also a service, a service to the internal customer, right? Next, uh, organizations will always need to balance the time and resources they allocate to new or change services against the time and resources they allocate to improve to do improvement opportunities right so in every company and organization it's always about time and resources as a constraint when i say constraint time and resources is the limit right and what this sentence is saying is they usually would choose whether to go for new services to develop, right, or products, or maybe improve a service or a product, right? If I think most of us do play games, right? Uh, so most of us know Nintendo Switch or PS4, and you already know the pattern, right? You would see these um, game manufacturer they would sometimes create a new service, right? Or a new product. Or sometimes they would just basically improve a product, right? Or a service. Meaning instead of like a PS4 to PS5 right away, they can do maybe PS4 and PS4 Pro, right? It's an improvement, right? It is a new product, but it is just an improvement technically, right? Okay, too much focus on just one area will lead to problems in the longer term. Okay, so example, if the organization only focuses on improving existing services, right, might find, might find itself unprepared for a major change in its market. 
okay? Again, maybe an example is, let's go back to Nokia phones, right? They might have been just improving their existing services, meaning their phones, right? But they didn't really create a new services or product, right? And that's why they are now uh, not in the market, right? Now Apple is and Samsung and other phones are the one leading the market. Okay, so an organization that only focuses on new services might, might find its existing services neglected and its customer base becomes unhappy, right? So if they focus so much on creating a new product always and not improving the existing product, right? The customer would feel that, well, these organization maybe are just trying to get money out of us, right? They keep on just creating new products but they're not really improving the existing products if there are defects or bugs, okay? Okay, this is not part of the syllabus, but it's still a good topic. So how do we identify opportunities, right? So this is a crucial question for a service provider organization. There are many tools, right, and techniques to find this answer, right? One technique is called the blue ocean and red ocean approach, right? A red ocean is defined as an established market with entrenched industry practices and intense competition. So it is already um, tried and tested, like it's matured, right? Uh, a blue ocean is an untapped market space free of competition where an organization can create customers, right? Uh, a quick example, right, um, is when a company would introduce a new product, right? I guess a quick example is um, when Nintendo launched the Wii, right? This is a blue ocean strategy because during that time, there was no one in the market uh, that has this motion-controlled controllers, right? So this is a blue ocean strategy. They didn't have any competitors with motion control systems. And basically, when we say red ocean, right, we can quickly see that blue ocean. Let's see if there's more example. Okay, so, right, they, they show the Wii U here. And Red Ocean could be uh, a quick example. So let's go back to gaming, right? Let's say there's already League of Legends and there's already Dota 2, right? And they are ex kind of exactly, kind of the same, right? So if someone created a new game that feels like and is the same as League of Legends or Dota 2. So that is a red ocean strategy because there are already big players and the market is already um, saturated or there's a lot of players in the market already, meaning there's a lot of companies having a lot of um, customers in the market. A blue ocean approach for an example is when they created a similar one again so you can still create a similar right but they now put it in a different platform right instead of playing it on a desktop pc or laptop this mobile legends is now through your phone right so that's also a blue ocean the reason why is there's no 5v5 uh like a tower type of defense i forgot what it's called like uh moba right moba a moba type game in the phone there's no moba type game in the phone so this is also a blue ocean 
I found it. The mic's off. And next is... Okay, Blue Ocean has the potential to provide rapid growth and large profits, right? Identifying Blue Ocean for a service provider organization can help to identify where resources will be best allocated, okay? And for some, uh, this requires like a lot of market research for the organization, right? Um, some of them already has identified, but the market is not ready. Remember last time when I talked about the Nintendo VR, right? So Nintendo VR was where the time that they have developed uh, this very old technology, right? Uh, but the market was not yet ready for the virtual reality. And also the technology is not, the, you, the technology is not that advanced yet for the users to like VR. Okay. Okay, so this part, maybe let's skip it. Um, let's see. Yeah, we can skip this part so we can move along faster. Equally, not every idea we receive from the customer is a good one what people believe they want and what they actually need can be di very different things if a service provider sees an opportunity but isn't sure that demand truly exists needs to allocate resources very carefully agile development describes the use of a minimum viable product mvp to provide feedback for future product development okay so let's dissect this again. So people have wants and needs, right? So sometimes people would say, okay, can you build me an app, right? And then they, the customer would build an app, right? Let's say the customer said, I want a League of Legends type of game, right, to be built. And let's say the service provider or the developers started creating that one and then they finish it but when the customer looks at it again they said oh that's not what we really wanted right so what happened there right so it could be a change of expectation it could be the service provider was not really clear on gathering what are the requirements okay and that's why we have a agile development, right? Agile development is basically doing sprints in your development, meaning you have a smaller development cycle, right? To build, right? And test and then get some feedback right away so that you can get customer feedback and change your application while it's still in the prototype stage. Right. So minimum viable product is a term that we can use. Right. Let's say the core features that we want is the application to have users sign up. Right. And to follow one another. Let's say that's like Twitter or Weibo. Right. That first functionality can be called a minimum viable product. Right. It is um just enough so that we can show the functionality right we can test it we can introduce it to customer even though it's not yet a complete app right so mvp is a working application right so that we can show and the customer can provide feedback for future product development as as i mentioned MVP has just enough features, okay, to satisfy early customers and help to identify any incorrect assumptions that have been made. If you remember when you are playing games, sometimes these developers would put out MVPs, right? It could be uh, alpha tests or beta tests, right? 
It is similar to that one. Okay. MVP reduces the cost and risk associated with the development project. Okay. MVP process can also include carrying out market analysis before any deployment actually takes place. The MVP will allow a product hypothesis to be tested, right? So meaning an idea, right? Use minimal resources instead of like using all the company resources to build this app, right? Maybe just show this idea first, if it makes sense through MVP. Accelerate learning, okay? Get the product or service to customers as soon as possible, right? And provide an opportunity for feedback for future deployment, development, okay? And then now for the next chapter, right? We're going to talk about chapter 10 to get the whole picture first. So let's go to chapter 10. Okay, chapter 10. Service chain, service value chain is the central element of SVS. If you remember the diagram, it's the one in the middle, right? The core. It is an operating model that outlines key activities required to respond to demand and facilitate value through products and services. So activities in the value chains include the plan, improve, engage, design and transition, obtain or build, deliver and support. Okay, and we now see the graph again, right? Okay, so activities in the chain don't necessarily happen in a linear flow. So it's not going to be maybe step by step, right? It could happen at the same time or maybe repeated for some elements, right? Or it could be that they do follow a linear flow and they repeat and do a series of iteration, right? So it's a repeat of steps. Different products, services, and consumers will lead to different streams of work and different routes through the value chain. For example, developing a new application will be different for amending an existing one, right? Meaning changing an existing one. These are an organization's value streams, are combinations of practices and value chain activities that lead to value. It should always lead to value, okay? Each value chain activity relies on inputs, creates outputs for other activities. To convert inputs into outputs, Value chain uses combinations of ITIL practices, which are a set of resources designed for performing certain types of work. Each activity can potentially use resources, processes, skills, and competencies. Okay, so let's see. They are saying activities are all interconnected. Skipping an activity or spending less time on it than it is needed will impact the whole value chain as other activities will not receive the inputs they need. Okay. Some key points to remember. Engage all. Uh, engage includes all engagement interactions. This includes, for example, internal, external customers, your suppliers, subject matter experts, okay, that all participate in the value chain activities, okay. 
All new resources are obtained through obtain slash build element. Okay. All planning takes place in the plan activity. Component, product and service creation, modification, delivery, maintenance and support are performed in an integrated way by the design and transition, obtain or build, and deliver and support activities. Products and services, demand and value, are SVS components, but they are not value chain activities. Okay, so demand, products and services are not value chain activities. Sorry, we have to include the value as well. Okay. Next, we have the plan, right? We already know what's the purpose of the plan to ensure a shared understanding of the vision, show the current status, improvement direction for all four dimensions and all products and services across the organization, okay? Information inputs into the plan activity, right? So we couldn't plan if we don't have an information, right? Example, if there is no demand or opportunity, how can you even start planning? Okay. So they are used, the plan activity, to create key outputs, including improvement opportunities for improved activity and contract agreements for engaged activity. Okay, so your key inputs to the plan activity, right? The information that we want are policies, requirements and constraints, meaning limitations, consolidated demand and opportunity. When we say consolidated, it's basically um, taking everything together, right? And we get this from engage. Uh, value chain performance information, improvement initiatives and plans. This is from improvement activity, improvement status report. Still from the improve activity. Next, we have knowledge and information about new or changed products and services. Uh, this is from design and transition and obtain slash build okay there's another knowledge and information and this one is for externally provided service components and these comes from the engage activity right so we do get outputs so that we can have the plan activity and next is what are the key outputs that we get from having a plan activity so these are, we can now have strategical or strategic, tactical, and operational plans. We have portfolio decisions for the design and transition activity, architectures and policies, right? Improvement opportunities for improved activity, contract and agreement requirements for engaged activities, and product and service portfolio for engaged activities. Next up, we have the improved activity, right? And the purpose, as the word says, is to improve, right? And to ensure continual improvement of products, services, and practices across all value chain activities and the four dimensions of service management okay we have the deliver and support it provides service performance information and engage provides stakeholder feedback outputs include improvement initiatives status reports and service information 
for design and transition activity. Okay. Just a reminder, we have been using the same common verbs, right, in the service value chain. And to not confuse you with the word used as a set uh, as a verb, also the word used as a uh, part of an activity is they capitalize those words. Okay. Next is um, so what do we need to for for the improved activity, right? We do need the product and service performance information, right? We got this from delivery and support. Stakeholder feedback. We already know what this is for, okay? Performance information and improvement opportunities. Knowledge and inf information about new or changed products and services. Knowledge and information about externally provided service components. So you now see a pattern. There is shared information, right? You saw in the plan activity and also in the improved activity where some of the information or the inputs are used or reused, okay? So from the input improved activity, what else do we get from that one? So we can create a new improvement initiatives and plans, have an information for value chain performance, get a report for um, status reports for improvement, okay? Contract and agreement requirements and service performance information. Okay. Next is the engage, right? It provides a good understanding of stakeholder needs, provides transparency, meaning um, it's easier for us to see what they are doing, right? Continual engagement and good relationship with all stakeholders. Engagement. Uh, engage activity provides oversight of requests and feedbacks from customer. When we say oversight, it basically provides us that information, right? It keeps track of it, okay? As well as incidents to help identify improve activity opportunities, okay? Engage is not only about engagement with customers, but also with suppliers, subject matter experts, management, and other stakeholders. So what do we need for the input engage activity? So we can quickly have some of them, right? Um, product and service portfolio, demand and opportunities, detailed requirements, Incident service requests and feedback. Information on completed user support tasks. Marketing opportunities. Cooperation opportunities and feedback. And so on and so forth, which is similar to the improve. So what do we get from the engage activity, right? So we get the consolidated demands and opportunity which can now be used for plan activities product and service requirements user support tasks improvement opportunities and stakeholder feedback change or project initiation requests and again the contracts and agreements with external and internal suppliers and partners okay Again, you are seeing shared information. Next up is the activity part of design and transition, right? This activity ensure that products and services continually meet stakeholders' expectation for quality, cost, and time to market, meaning how fast it would 
be introduced to the market okay this activity receives portfolio decisions as an input as well as information about components provided by suppliers from engage activity okay this activity will create requirements and specifications that are passed to obtain slash build and contract requirements that are passed to engage. So what are the inputs that is required or would be useful to design and transition activity, right? So at the top already, we have mentioned the following, which is portfolio decisions, architectures and policies, right? From the plan activity and the following such as product and service requirements, improvement initiatives and improvement status reports, service performance information, service components, and the two knowledge information for external and internal and change products. So from the design and transition activity, what outputs do we get? We have the requirements and specifications, contract and agreement requirements, new and change products, and again, it, it is the same thing. Okay. And by now, you should be seeing that they do have slight differences, right? Sometimes they would use an input of an activity, and maybe sometimes it would be the output for a certain activity with the same uh, topic. Right. Next is the obtain slash build. So let's try to finish up the uh, textbook before we go to break. Okay. So obtain slash build value chain. Ensure that service components are available and when and where they are needed and meet the agreed specification. Okay. Organizations need to decide whether to create products and services themselves or to use external resources or a combination. Hence, the word is obtain, meaning it's from external resources, a third party, right? A supplier, okay? Or do, we, do they just build it on their own, okay? So what are the inputs needed in obtain slash build activity? So I quickly go, will go over some, okay? Architectures and policies, right? Skip this one, goods and services, okay? Change requests and the other informations that were used for other activities. Next is, what do we get out of obtain slash build activities? We now get service components, right? Uh, we still have the knowledge and information, contract and agreement requirements, performance information and improvement opportunities. So now this basically is building the product, okay? And build or purchase the product or service. The next step now with that one, once you build the product or service, you would now deliver and support it. You bring it to the customer and also support it, right? So it ensures services are delivered and supporting according to agreed specification and stakeholders expectation. So if you said that the product would be delivered at their house, right? And installation is supported, you should meet those requirements, okay? So this activity will receive new or updated services, including service components from obtain slash build, user support tasks from improve activity. The outputs will include the new or updated services being offered to users, okay? So what, do, what inputs do they need? Okay, so I would now summarize because a lot of them are the same. Aside from the other information from other activities, 
right? They do need the new or change products and services uh, so that they can deliver the product and services which come from the design and transition and also the service components from obtain slash build. Okay. So what are the outputs do we get, right? From deliver and support activities. Now we have the services delivered to customers and users, right? We can still grab information, right? From the user supported tasks, uh, product and service performance information, and so on and so forth, the usuals, right? From the other activities that uses or provide the information. Okay, so that is the end of um, chapter 10. And we'll just quickly go back to that diagram, right? So we do have demand, right? And once we the demand is clear, we can start planning, right? And we can engage. And once we engage, uh, we can basically do these uh, activities in parallel, right? Or linear flow, right? That's fine. And then now, one, every, once everything, the activities is done, products and services can now be delivered. Uh, once delivered, we can check if it improves value or not. And then we can keep improving as we need. Okay, so this is uh, the end for the uh, lecture with the textbook. I'll see you guys in 15 minutes and have a nice break. So my yes points for module four, I have um, will reduce um, some of the yes points that I will look at. So to spend more time for the article reading for today. So our first question is from Ethan, right? So he was asking which one is the most important one, meaning which one for the resources, processes, skills, competencies, or are they are binding each other, right? Um, the importance would depend but all of them would require attention, right? Meaning an input, right? So they, as you can see, they do interact with uh, the, I mean, they do interact with one another, right? And because like, for example, you might not have the skills and competencies, but if you have like the resources to buy or get a service that helps you with that, so that would solve that problem, okay? So uh, the answer is it would depend on the stakeholder. Okay. Um, with opportunity and demand and triggering activities in SVS, will value be generated? Uh, I think lecturer already answered this one. Okay. So I want to know what is the value of IT service management, right? So IT service management helps us have a framework, right? So that we can basically um, have a structured way to create and uh, improve uh, services, right? Um, and that is the core value of IT service management. Again, to provide the service and managing it correctly, right? And as we can see, we have to plan for it because not every service can provide good value, right? Uh, you always have to check if the positive impacts outweigh the negative impacts. Okay, and my voice is not clear, so let Okay, I switch to my microphone. How about now? Is my voice better? Okay, cool. Yeah, I think it switched over to the internal mic instead of my external mic. Okay. So do we need to understand the market to launch more services? Yes. Quickly answer that as a yes. Or do we only serve one technology? 
Mm, that doesn't help with relating to the market. Um, yeah, but again, you do need to learn the market, right? You need to do research, market research, right? Consumer research, uh, behavioral patterns, right? Buying patterns. And there's a lot of it, right? Because if you just launch something and assume that people would just buy it, that's not going to work, right? Okay, in terms of services, should we focus on a certain point or diversify? That's also a good question. If you do have a strong... Uh, uh, you have a strong, um, what you call that? If you've got a strong uh, grab or hold of the market, or people know you already, um, you can just focus on a single cool product, right? But also, you can diversify if you have the resources, or maybe the market is very tough in terms of competition. Right, uh, I, I, I'll give you an example. Let's say the Coca-Cola brand, right? Or Nike brand, right? Um, some of them can just focus on a single product, right? And keep improving the service. And as you can see, Nike or doesn't really go out of, let's say they have now Nike cars, right? You don't have Nike cars, right? Or Adidas cars. They still try to focus on apparel, meaning clothing and shoes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to the question right away. How can customers trust the confidentiality of the services provided by each company? Again, that is through looking for agreements, right? You have no choice as well, but to completely trust. Right. One is check their reputation, check if they do have big clients, right? Check if a lot of com other companies trust them. Okay. Then um, still anytime uh, bad things can happen. So that's why you do have to have agreements. Let's say there's an agreement to say that the data that we give to you must be protected or you will be liable or maybe you are uh, will be fined or get uh, penalties from breaching the contract meaning if you did not um, if you did not um, honor the contract right if you did not um, fulfill the contract then maybe you have to pay me more right and the follow-up would be, and whether it will increase the security risk by cooperating with one company all the time. So this is a, a good conversation where, let's say, do you just get your supplies in one supplier, right? Or do you get supplies from different suppliers, right? And getting your getting your supplies in one supplier your risk is now only in is now all of your risk is now in just one supplier if that supplier went down then you don't get any supplies right so that's another thing so even in technology right let's say you have the services of company a only if company a went down then your services are down as well so you might want to think about having there's a company A and company B that you have as your um, supplier or a partner, right? Okay, through this review, I learned that value chain is an activity. Um, okay, question. Is value chain suitable for all products? It should be, right? Because it's just planning, right? It's just a framework and we can make it flexible to for a certain product, okay? Or a certain type of product. How do you identify blue ocean opportunities? Uh, market research. And again, blue ocean not only gives you a lot of rewards, but 
it can also have a big risk, right? If 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 the um, if the company tried to do a blue ocean, right, and maybe the market is not ready or the consumers are not ready, or the company did not execute well to create that product or service, then they would generate a lot of loss, right? Okay. Um, yep. Next, the question is, how should we embed, right? So incorporate, right? Or put, right, in a service into a partner's value chain to create value for our customers, right? So um, the service value chain, right, all of these can be done on our on 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 a single company, right? But to be efficient, right, and to have focus, you do want to have partners, subject matter experts, and suppliers, right? So that you also grab their service and use their service and create your own service. Okay. And that creates more value to the customer. Okay. Because maybe if you can do it on your own, but maybe you do it uh, poorly, right, or substandard, meaning not even in the average level, then it can still create value for the customer, but not as valuable as getting other experts to help you. Okay, question. Is it possible if we can't manage it? Okay, the SVS. So what measures do we need to take? Well, um, if you can't manage your SVS, then you do have to hire subject matter experts, right? That knows the IT um, service value system, right? That knows how to execute the framework, right? Because um, if you don't have that type of person, then it's going to be hard, right? If it's on a small scale, meaning a small company, uh, maybe there's not a lot of risk, then it's fine if someone couldn't really manage the SVS right away, right? So what measures? Either you hire or you train your uh, the person who will manage the SVS. Is it important to do a good job in service or quality? This is already a yes, right? And uh, the why, why is it important is if you don't do a good service or quality, right? Another company may come along and provide the same service with a better quality, right? And now you would end up losing your customers, right? So if you don't have that continual improvement, right, uh, you, you would be out of the market soon. Unless you have a monopoly where only you are in that, um, in that market. Well, an example could be, let's say you have um, a company, right? Let's say Coca-Cola, a drinking, uh, soft drinks company, and let's say Coca-Cola is the only player in the market, let's say in China, then even though the quality is bad, people would still buy it because they, there is no other product or brand, right? But again, if a new competitor comes in, then that would be difficult for Coca-Cola. Okay, there should be some logical relationships in the chain. So what kind of logical relationship exists in the service value chain, All right? So the, the, at the high level overview, right? The relationship would be an input, an output, right? And it could be a one, most of the time, it's like a one too many relationship where, um, an activity interacts with a lot of the output of other activities, right? So you could think of it's like a, an activity has a lot of dependencies, right? So 
And another activity would have a lot of dependencies as well, right? So that's why they do work together. And if something is missing, right? They Let's say uh, it should be getting input from different activities and one of them is missing, right? Then it will impact a certain activity, right? So I guess, I guess you can say there's dependencies, right? And again, they have mentioned that we should pay attention to all of the uh, activities included in the service value chain. What does Red Ocean do? What Red Ocean can help for the service provider organization? So to quickly have an analogy, when we say Red Ocean, think of like say you have an ocean, right? And you have a lot of sharks, right? And there's blood in the water and there would be a lot of competition, right? It's like sharks fighting with one another to get their food, right? And that is very difficult, right? And you have to be the best in the market, right? You have to have um, uh, a lot of uh, efficient processes, right? Provide a lot of value compared to other organizations, right? So Red Ocean strategy works if you are or you have the resources to be a leader in the market, right? So what does the phrase SVS design to combat silos? It means to fight non-communicative. Let's find another word. It is to combat isolated, meaning detach, right? It's to combat isolated teams in an organization, okay? What other technologies, uh, again, the question would be not technologies, what other strategies besides blue ocean or red ocean? Um, there's definitely a lot more. So you can check market strategies and you can check that later. Okay, maybe change of name. Again, MVP is where you show a proof of concept so that you can immediately push something and show it to some new customer and check if the product is right or they like the product, they want the product. Then if that is good, then you can quick, uh, keep building your product so that at the end, when you introduce your product in the market, it is as close to what they really wanted, okay? So value stream, in what ways do value streams and processes define activity, workflow controls, and procedures required for agreed goals, okay? How does a value stream involve all parts of organization working in an integrated and coordinated manner? Again, that answers with combating silos in an organization, right? If you increase transparency, increase communication and collaboration, then now you would have that shared vision, right? Shared resources. And that helps you uh, achieve goals within your organization, okay? Um, product and service deliverables, uh, product uh, could come in many forms and shape. Uh, it can transfer ownership uh services most of the time ownership is not transferred and deliverables is um you can think of the root word you deliver right maybe service uh commitments would be another word but again you can just use the word um service right you provide the service that service deliverables okay we can first check the Red Ocean, again, and that's why they, here's a, an example, right? There's a shark for that Red Ocean. See, jump in with the sharks, and there's a lot of blood in the water. There's a lot of competition, 
or jump to the right where there's no competition in the market okay another nice picture right so look this is funny the person is trying to fish for fish in the ocean right when there are sharks so that's going to be hard right the person is looking is fishing in a water where there's no other competitors or no sharks okay and let's see market strategies this just to check one of the Maria's point uh, that's not what we want and let's see market research strategies well these are just um, activities that you can do so that's not really help us okay anyways we can move along with now the muddiest point is done we can head back to the slides as a recap okay in this um lesson lesson four the service value chain we did learn the purpose of each value in the chain activity we have the plan improve engage design and transition obtain slash build deliver and support and here is the service value system right where you have opportunity and demand right at the left and you have the value at the right as the outcome and to produce that value you must have the service value chain which is help with governance and practices and also guiding principles and continual improvement then inside of the service value chain right there's demand and there's value right and with demand after you get the demand you can do things in parallel meaning at the same time or in a linear flow or in repeated step or in iterations with the engage design and transition obtain slash build deliver and support and once you have that you now have products and services right and then now it can provide value so we keep doing the planning and improving for existing services or just plan for new products and services so here's an example right so value streams are a combination of activities and practices designed for a specific situation, right? And you can see the demand engage the plan and you see the lines, right? As we have mentioned many times, the plan activity, right? Ensure shared understanding of the vision. It basically um, moves all the activities to the direction helps them move to the direction to the outcome and output okay the improve also um, would help with the outcome and output but it's more like improvement of existing products services and also practices okay so the engage right it gives us a good understanding of what the stakeholder uh, wanted, right? Not only in demand, now it's like in contracts, agreements, writing, and that provides transparency and continual engagement and good relationship with all stakeholders, right? The design and transition value chain ensures products and services continually meet stakeholders expectation now thinking about the quality cost and time to market the obtainer build is where we either create it by ourselves by our own company or we purchase it right or subscribe to a service okay next is deliver and support once we have built the product or the service we have now to deliver that a way to deliver that and a way to support that 
And again, it should be aligned with what the stakeholders' expectation are. And that is for the reference. Okay. And we're done with these and these. And for now, let's first do the concept test. Let's see. And let's put a voting as well. So please uh, vote and provide an explanation. Oh, before that, uh, before you answer concept test, let's now go over to um, the article reading for today and also give you an example of what my questions that I will ask, right? I'll provide that link first to, so this is for one on one, and this is the link, and also provide you guys with the PDF. Uh, hold on. So, all right so first we'll continue on on our one-on-one -on -one, okay let me first fix the screen so i will let you guys read this right if i'm the student the first thing i would do it says here seven common itsm data quality management issues right so I should first have an understanding, what is ITSM? What is data quality management, right? What is data, right? What is quality management? What is issues? If I put them together, what is data quality management issues, right? Because even I, sometimes I don't know the terms, but again, now with the internet, you can easily search, right? You can start right away with what is data quality, right? Because I would quickly ask you what it, what is something, right? And then next, I would ask why do we need that, right? So here's helping for everyone now, right? This gives me an idea. Data quality refers to the state of qualitative or quantitative pieces of information and it's very, very technical. That's not the one that I'm really looking for. I want to I want to hear how you would explain it in your own words, right? So you can just say that, well, data quality ensures that the data is correct, right? With just that simple answer, anyone can understand that right away, right? I don't need to have someone who's learning ITSM or database or data, right? To even understand what this is all about when you explain using this one, right? People would get lost. And then this would be another help. So when you now know what it is, the next important as well is I would always ask why data quality is important, right? You put the is important, okay? And look, it gives you an answer. It gives you a better decision-making across an organization, right? And when I ask that, and let's say use your own words, right? When I ask why is data quality important, you can say that it helps decision-making, right? It helps, you can even use other words, it can help a manager decide better, right? Uh, improved data quality, right, um, reduces r risk, right? And then you would now search what is risk and sample of risk, right? So you should be doing that as well, right? And also here it says high quality data you have, the more you have, the more confidence you can have in your decision. In your own words, right, maybe you can say that, um, with good quality data, right, similar to high quality data, with good data, my manager 
can now be more sure, right, that what he is doing is correct, right? So simple words, but it still explains the, uh, the terminology or the concept, okay? Next, if I ask you to read the article, it says here seven common, right? So I can quickly ask you, name one of the seven common data quality issues. So I'm expecting you guys to either say this one, or maybe you can skip ahead and say, oh, um, one of the common data quality issues is insufficient investment of resources, right? And the way I would ask would be the same thing. I would ask, well, what do you mean by insufficient, right? What is inefficient investment of resource? What is investment of resource? So I can start looking what it is, right? Uh, this does not help natural invest resource investing, right? So if you can find, um, we can say uh, another word for resource investment, right? You can do something like that, right? And now you can get more other English, right? Other English words called synonym, meaning words that can hold the same meaning, right? Uh, could be assets, fund, wealth, right? Money, capital, riches, supplies, stock, right? So that helps you find easier words, right? Even just going with data, when I say data, we can say other words for data, right? And then now you have a lot of different things. Information, right? You can also use that, it's similar. Next, uh, I would ask you, okay, so what is insufficient investment of resources all about? Then, I don't want you to read this. I mean, I don't want you to tell me this, right? I want you to tell me how you understand this, right? And let's say this one, I'll read. There might be more focus on system development and new features than on ensuring status quo is fit for purpose. So now I would st start searching what is status quo, right? They keep using words, right? See, so no change, how things stand, situation, circumstances, existing condition, right? So that would help you. And now when you're explaining, it's easier for you as well, because now you understand. So when I give you this, do some research, look for alternate words, right? So it's easier for you. And now I would ask, why is there an insufficient investment of resource, right? I can quickly check why is there an efficient um, investment of resource. And this one is an inefficient use. Um, we can just remove resource. Why is there inefficient investment? Let's see. Right. Um, now it's not really helping us. So we can look for, let's say, focus on system development. Right. So, okay. System development and new features. Right. So now you can ask, why are they uh, focusing on new features? What could be a reason? Okay, and if this is hard, just say that you can also ask, well, can I talk about, let's say, number five, right? Then now there's a question here. I can ask the same question. Who owns which data? And then I'll ask, why do we need to know who owns data? Then you check again. Why do we, do you, or we need to know data 
owner or ownership. And then you get explanation, right? So because they can ensure data is protected that are in the right controls in places to access data. So that gives you a clear explanation, right? Okay, so at the very least, I would expect when I say, give me an example of data, right? Give me an example of um, skills. Give me an example of tools. I should be able to get the answers right away, okay? At least try to learn the high-level overview so you can at least have a conversation with me. Okay, now that it's all good, I do have, uh, I do hope that that provides a guidance, right? So now, uh, how do you guys uh, finish the uh, concept test, right? And let's also take the break.